we're here today to give you an update on one of our huge projects. It's about a $13 million project. It's in the city of East Point. We are on Beaconsfield between 8 and uh, 9 Mile Road. Some of the sound you can probably hear is I-94, so we're right next to I-94. This is what we call our in-system storage project. And uh, this is, there's a 11 and a half foot diameter pipe that runs from East Point, runs all the way down into St. Clair Shores, and all of the flow from the two communities, right, East Point and St. Clair Shores, goes into that pipe. We try to treat it and handle it at our Chapaton pump station, but, which is right at the foot of Nine Mile. But sometimes in heavy rain events, we can't handle it because the systems in these older communities are what they call combined systems. So both their sanitary and their storm water combines. Obviously, we're getting these huge rain events, and because of that, the underground infrastructure just literally can't handle it. So we do treat it. We're permitted by the state, but then we discharge it out into Lake St. Clair. And let me tell you what, I don't care if we're permitted by the state. It's ridiculous. This is 19, or excuse me, 2023. Should be 1923 with these crazy ideas. 2023, we're still discharging combined sewer overflows out into our magnificent Great Lakes. And we don't want to do that anymore. So we have done some operational changes at our Chapaton pump station, which has reduced our CSOs, as we call them, combined sewer overflows, somewhere in the 30 percentile already. This particular project is going to reduce our combined sewer overflows by probably another 10 to 15 percent. And then we have another project that we've also uh, told you about, what we call our canal expansion, which, which will reduce them by another 30 plus percent. So we're making huge headway, but it's very expensive. You have to have the political will to do this. And I told you how much it costs. The good news is there won't be any increase to the ratepayers because we have been using federal funds, the American Rescue Plan funds, you've heard of it referred to as ARPA, which we have gotten most of the uh, money for this particular project from Macomb County Board of Commissioners. And Sarah Lucido is uh, the commissioner that represents this area. She has been extremely supportive of this project. And, uh, and then we've gotten uh, a lot of dollars as well through uh, the state. And our federal delegation has also been totally on board with this. So I'm gonna ask Sarah Lucido, Commissioner Lucido, just to say a couple of words. Then I'm going to ask Steve Rosicki, who is our project manager here, to really explain to you exactly how this is going to work and, uh, and give us a little bit of idea of the time frame of when, uh, when we can see this project online. Commissioner? Thank you. So I would like to start by saying that this project is really great for all the residents of Southeast Michigan because we all know that Lake St. Clair is a gem to all of us and we all care about the water quality in our lakes. So when Candace came to the board, of course, we were all gonna support it. We all wanna make sure that Michigan keeps our water clean for all of the residents to use and be able to enjoy. Thanks so much, and I really appreciate your support on this and other projects in this whole drainage district. So now Steve Rizicki is our, uh, as I say, our project manager. And uh, as we do this video, you're gonna be able to see uh, a little bit better uh, with some clips that we'll put in here of how this project looked when it started, and we are making such enormous progress right now. I'm, I'm just very, very excited about the whole thing. So I would ask Steve to tell us what we're actually looking at here, Steve. So we're looking right now at the construction for the in-system storage device, like Candace mentioned. Um, so in-system storage, meaning we're storing flow, the combined sewer, uh, uh, that would be combined sewer flow, storing it in the system, so in the pipe upstream. Um, and what we're installing here is uh, basically an inflatable bladder that will, at the beginning of a rain event, inflate and seal off the pipe, forcing the CSO to be stored within the existing infrastructure. Um, what you can see behind me here is the, the access shaft. Um, they're building currently a bypass around where this inflatable is going to be installed, um, which will allow us to control the dewatering of the system and send all the CSO to the treatment plant for proper treatment at the end of the event when the system can handle that capacity. Um, so if you can see behind me here, um, we'll get a better shot of it, but it goes basically around. We've got two big structures that are built right now to house some gates. 
and uh, they'll be wrapping up the project here. Uh, early 2024 is final completion. Um, we are at, on pace to have this wrapped up and start uh, backfilling here within the next couple weeks, uh, as well as start working on the mechanical process side of things. Um, we're on pace to have the road um, you know, starting to open up here at the end of the year, and then we'll go through commissioning, startup, testing at the beginning of next year and, and get this online. You know, it's interesting, I think, to note as well, we had some value engineering done by our team here. Uh, and what we found was, as I mentioned, this is an 11 and a half foot pipe that's been here for decades, right? And yet there was only a bit of the pipe that was actually being utilized after a heavy rain event. So you had capacity, huge amount of capacity within the existing infrastructure. That's what's so important about this. I mean, if you had to put in a brand new pipe, if you were putting in an 11 and a half foot pipe right now, all the way down this, I don't even want to know how much it would cost. But the beauty of this is we are using existing underground infrastructure to all of our advantage, right? We already made the investment decades before. Probably your parents or your grandparents made the investment. Let's use it. Let's use it to its full capacity. And that's really what we're going to be doing here by installing this uh, rubberized weir, bladder, uh, what have you, by uh, storing, we call it in-system storage. We look at our system, we're storing in the system. It's, it's pretty descriptive, really. One of the things, obviously, we have to be so careful that when they pour all of this concrete, that the concrete cures properly. And so this is about 140 yards of concrete that was poured just recently. You can't really see it because they have a blanket on top while it's curing. So this concrete, um, due to its thickness, is classified as mass concrete. So for its high ultimate strength, it has a high cement content, which generates a lot of heat in the curing process, similar to the Hoover Dam where they put water pipes in it. Um, this project's not quite that magnitude, but we have to manage the way the concrete heats up and cools down over time. So we have sensors in the concrete to monitor that. And we control the temperature by adding and removing blankets as necessary. Um, but, you know, the first 48 hours is most critical. And after about a week to 10 days, we'll start removing the blankets and we'll end up with a very high strength final product. So you actually have sensors that you put in the concrete they're onto your Bluetooth, right? Yes. In your, have, on your phones, and then you're able to see what's happening? Yes, we have Bluetooth sensors in the concrete that monitor the concrete at the surface of the concrete and um, at the deeper, thicker sections of the concrete and monitor the differential yeah. between them and to maintain that differential such that the concrete will not go under thermal stress and crack. Wow. Yep. So we just want you to know some of the different nuances of this project because I mean we find we all find it very interesting but the most interesting thing is we're building this stuff to last right I mean we're spending a lot of money on these projects and they're not just for the short term they're generational they're transformation uh, transformative uh, projects that we have here and it's very important that all of the products and all the processes that we use on site are going to last but anyway it's all about water quality and we always say that water quality equals quality of life. As Commissioner Lucido mentioned, everybody in Macomb County and in our entire region, we all know we're so blessed to live here on the Great Lakes. But it's for all of us to have the political will, be willing to spend money on projects like this so that <clears throat> generationally we do such a better job of uh, making sure that we protect our Great Lakes not only do we, you know, whether you're recreating in it, you're fishing in it, you're swimming in it, you want to go to the beaches, you don't want the beach to be closed after a heavy rain event, uh, or what have you. Let's not also forget that it's our drinking water supply. It is a drink, fresh water drinking water supply uh, for us here on this side of the lake and also the, our great neighbors over in Canada. So we all need to work together. And that's what this project is all about. So thanks for joining us.